Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Your style doesn't impress me. In fact, it sucks. How do we decide what films to review? Patience, process, perseverance. And Patreon, yes? This is another film chosen by one of our Patreon shadows, who are usually out to get us. But Murder by Phone is directed by Michael Anderson, best known for such classics as The Dam Busters and Logan's Run. Here, winning the Dark Corner's John Borman Award for talented directors going temporarily insane. Kiss the bride! You did well. I will take the bride. I should say it is Murder by Phone we're looking at, which is the truncated US release version of the original Bells. But it's the US title that really captures the plot. Hello? That's what happens if you don't hold on to the handrail. Friend of the family, Nat Bridger, played by Richard Chamberlain, tries to find out what happened. She died of a heart attack in a museum subway station. One of those heart attacks that blows you halfway up an escalator and leaves third degree burns on your ear. I guess the coroner was <laughs> phoning it in. You think that the police are part of the cover up? Bridger is an activist and conspiracy theorist. You are from the front rank of every march and demonstration. In a sort of non specific way, so he is immediately sure that they are responsible. You work for them. Meanwhile, <laughs> textbook heart attack. Sounds pretty off the wall to me. I mean, a telephone killing people. Bridger infiltrates the phone company via a guided tour. By the year 2000, there will be 1.4 trillion phones in the world. On your left is our death lab. We don't lock it, so just help yourself to a uniform and wander in. How's it going? Any progress? You could send a thing like that down the line? The science is obviously nonsense, and for once, I'm not going to beat them up for the hero jumping to the correct conclusion with unseemly speed. Because it keeps on happening. And I think if you find multiple corpses next to melted phones, you might start to ask some questions. Unless you're the police. Three, check through your jackets and see if there have been any similar deaths in the past couple of days. At this point, there have been four deaths, and it's only when Bridger berates the lead detective that he spots the connection. You're telling me that a telephone killed the girl? I'm leaning in that direction. But of course, this is to make Bridger the stereotypical hero. What are you doing? I'm taking you up on your offer. And subscribers will already know how much I dislike this man. You're fast, Bridger. I like your style. When a movie goes out of its way to tell you how awesome the lead is... Are you? We are the forces of goodness and mercy, Mr. Waits. It's because he's not. I mind the smug attitude where you dictate information to the law. That says you're above the law. Says the man who broke into the phone company, assaulted a man on the street... That's crazy! Go on, go on. ...and has his picture next to the word smug in the dictionary. Matt, hmm? don't do anything stupid. Hey, I got a PhD. In the same way that mad science of the 50s tends to be done purely in the name of science, mad technology of the 70s and 80s is done purely in the name of conspiracy. It must be a real pain in the ass going through life thinking that there's a Watergate behind every closed door. The phone company has developed this technology for them. They run the world and they're scared of what? Of you? But they're not the ones doing the killing. That's Noah Clayton, the tour guide. I told him where to find you. A twist I'll admit I did not see coming, and Noah is helpful enough to explain over the phone. Fiber optics was mine, Bridger. They stole my vision. I'll buy the man who invented fiber optic being robbed of credit. 
I don't think you then demote him to tour guide. And, despite knowing better than anyone how this technology works, he keeps talking on the phone for long enough that Bridger can turn his technology against him. Why did he kill Bridger's friend at the start? That was a test. I didn't even know her name. Because it would have been so difficult for him to test it on someone he actually wanted to kill. This is just so he kills someone innocent. The tacit suggestion being that if he killed someone who works for the phone company, that would be fine. You've... you've lost track of the enemy. You can't tell the innocent from the guilty. And speaking of people he might want to kill... In a city of four million people, how come you're the only one that thinks that? No one believes Bridger at the start. He is literally the lone voice. All Clayton has to do is kill him and he can act with impunity. And all he has to do to kill him is give him a phone call. But he doesn't even try. They don't fit into this cheap little paperback plot you're cooking up. If you can get past Bridger's holier-than-thou attitude... What really hurts is someone glorifying something she doesn't understand. There's no reason this shouldn't work, and it does have some tense moments. But the implausibilities and inconsistencies mount up and bury it. <laughs> I suspect it didn't work. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to pick a film for us to review, then join us on Patreon as a shadow. What are the best and worst conspiracy thrillers? Let us know in the comments below. I'll call you.